guys, welcome back to Making Everyday Magic. My name is Shauna. If you are new here, we are a homeschooling family of four who's in our sixth year of homeschooling. I have a first and a fifth grader. And today I am answering your questions. Guys, before we go any further, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications and give this video a thumbs up. As always, you can find me right on down in the comments or over on Instagram at Making Everyday Magic. Before I jump into your questions and answers, I just wanted to let you know that Creative Fabrica has another amazing deal for you. I will have a link down below. Um, you guys had a really great reaction to the teacher club card that I shared with you a while back. But there's so much more to Creative Fabrica. I do have a special link that will get you an absolutely special deal, again, down in the description box. But I did not know they had classes. They have classes, like crafty classes. You can download all kinds of things from them and they have classes. I'm, I'm completely like blown away by the idea that they have classes. You can create artwork right on there. You can download pretty much anything. Embroidery files, fonts, you can do font storage, you can make word, what do, what do they call Word cloud art, which I think is super cool. They have homeschool resources, crafty resources, all kinds of things, and everything's available with a commercial license. So for example, if you was a homeschool mom, what felt so compelled to go start building some homeschool resource materials, you could use the things that you've downloaded from Creative Fabrica with full commercial license. So keep that in mind. Um, again, link down below. Guys, let's get into the questions. I said, please, please ask me questions, ask me anything. And every single question was about homeschool. So we have a lot of homeschool questions, but tis the time of year. Let me start with some of the big ones because they, yeah, I don't know what order I'm gonna do this in. I have a whole list down here. So if you see me looking down, it's because I'm reading what they are because I can't remember. Um, okay. One of the questions that you always see, always get, what do you use? How do I know what to use? I'm gonna start this, what do I use? I would love to tell you that it is as simple as telling you what to use, but it's not. The first thing that you need to do is ask yourself some very serious questions. How much time do you wanna put into this? What is your budget? What is your kid's learning style? What is your teaching style? Do you imagine? Do you want to be highly involved? Do you want to be less involved? Are you worried about um, getting full credit? Do you want it to be secular? Do you want it to be religious? There are a lot of questions that go into that. And what you first need to do is figure out what you're looking for. You cannot find it because it doesn't matter how great I think something is because it is all honestly so subjective. And it honestly is all based on what works for my family is what I'm going to like. So if you can even just nail down one tiny aspect of that, like my kid would love a literature study, that gives you a direction to point in. And I'm always gonna tell you uh, to start with your big steps. So start with math, language arts, because that is the one big pain points and two, like let's not kid like the bulk of schooling, right? I'm not saying it's everything, but those are kind of big rocks, right? Like those are the big rocks you put in before the small rocks in the sand. So first and foremost, answer just any questions. Do you want it to be entirely online? Do you want it to be absolutely no online? Does your kid learn really well from workbooks or apps? First, you must identify something and go from there. If you want a one, one, one box to rule them all, let me recommend the Timber Doodle Cats. They have religious, they have non-religious. I absolutely love them. And it was a really good place to start when I was starting, if that makes sense. Um, we started with the distance-based learning through Texas Tech. Uh, and again, because I, I needed that, right? That was, the, that was the question I had. That's what I needed answer. So I completely understand having that question. I'm just saying the answer isn't as simple as that. And your answer right now is gonna change, especially as you start learning and start doing. so. Don't get so married to the idea that you have to have exactly what's going to work forever right now. But if you can nail down any of those questions, it's going to help you an absolute ton. The next part of this is what is the best? Which again, see question one, a hundred percent subjective, depending on it, the best, the best. I could probably go and find a um, golden, gilded, wonderful, best thing that ever did happen to 95% of the planet. If it doesn't work for my kid, it's garbage, okay? It's poop, it belongs in the toilet. If it doesn't work for us, it doesn't freaking matter. So 
There is no the best. It's gonna be what works best for you. It's gonna be what suits your child best. It, there is no the best. I'm really sorry, I really wish there was. I wish it was ranking just like, you know, is it, cause I think it's that public school mindset, right? Like. If I am moving to a new a new city, I wanna live where the best elementary school is. And I can tell you that because we have looked at test scores and rankings and things like that. So we know what the best elementary school is in the area. Homeschool ain't like that, y'all. It does not work like that. And I'm so sorry, but first you have to figure out, just get yourself in a direction of what you think might work best for your child. So I cannot tell you what is best. I cannot tell you where to start. You start with asking the questions. That's gonna, that's where you start. And if, how do you know what your kids are supposed to know? How do you know what your kids are supposed to know? Well, you kind of a little bit don't. I know, it's real scary. Um, something that I have done to try to just kind of figure out what some parameters or benchmark is, is I can actually look, I'm in Texas, I can look at the uh, TEA website. Uh, Texas Education Agency website, and they have the full like scope and sequence for every grade like this, they will learn this and they will do that. So you can look at that to give yourself an idea of what, where they should be when that's a pretty good thing. Uh, the other thing is how do you know what all it teaches? And that comes back to the scope and sequence and, and like everything has it. If you go and actually look for like a curriculum, it will say this piece covers this or kids can be expected to know this even night zookeeper has it again the timber doodle curriculums have it um they we've got the you know what your preschooler needs to know or what your kindergartner needs to know that's got a whole thing in there almost every piece i'm trying <laughs> like the first time i don't have an example in here hang on okay so i'm hoping that this like answers and covers the question this is math you see okay so and you can find all this on their website. So when you find a piece that you know you wanna use, right in here, curriculum sequence. It tells you what to use. And then which major concept skills for Zeta, additional concept skills for Zeta. And then over here, it has it broken down your table of contents in the chapters. So this is telling you what you're gonna learn in this curriculum. And again, you can find all of these things right on the curriculum piece websites, okay? And that's not the only one that does it. Here's all about reading. And they go through and tell you, first of all, your table of contents, your lesson plans has all of that, which is absolutely amazing. But usually in the first couple pages, and again, you can find all of this almost always on their website, okay? What you should know about this program. Is your student in the right level? Preview the teacher's manual, activity book readers, but almost everything is going to have some sort of scope and sequence because it's essentially like a syllabus, right? Like for a college course. So it's going to give you the, um, the information that you need to know. I like the, actually, I like really like their appendixes in here. Cause you can check off the things that they've learned. Um, it's going to give you the, uh, everything that you need to know to know what you're teaching, what you're covering. It's not really any different than that. So it's really helpful to know what that is and that can tell you like what you're teaching or what this piece will tell you. And again, you can compare that against the public school standards for expectation or if you're in a state that has like, um, you know, some states have a lot more regulation than I do. So they'll have like benchmarks for where you should be, where your kid should be. And that's a really good place to find those answers. Okay, so how do you know when to move your child up? And this is a great question. I just had, we just switched from Mazdas Language Arts, uh, Mazdas Literature to Michael Clay Thompson at the beginning of this year. And my daughter in Michael Clay Thompson, it was one of those things she could have gone either down to the first level or up to the second level. So I was like, well, I'm so close to kind of the start of this whole program. I personally chose to pull her down and I was like, you can move a little faster if that's necessary. So what we did is we did that. And so she is going at her own pace. So now she's on track because she's in level two. Now, if what you mean by how do you know when to move them up like a grade level or not? And I did the same thing with Amelia this year that I've done with, with Em in the past, which is when they've completed it. So if, my daughters breeze through and complete something by Christmas. If it only takes like a semester, 
there's a whole semester left, that's a good time to move them up versus having them not working on whatever that thing is for that whole time. If they finish it up in spring break, we're really close to the end of the year. We're just going to do a little stuff to reinforce practice there. So I will move them up if there is a substantial amount of time. If not, we'll just keep practicing what we've got. And that's how I've determined to do that. Again, I don't have a lot of oversight, so it might be different if you have, you're in one of those states that really does. Um, okay, how did we, how did we do starting my oldest? She started using an all about reading program, but she started and only used actually level three. How did that go? It went really well. The program is, one, you get a fantastic education building on itself. I absolutely love it. You have used it all the way up with my youngest one, but it was the only level, it was the first year we switched to our timber dual kits. It was the only level that my oldest daughter did. And I felt like they can easily be standalone. Uh, they're absolutely better as kind of building on top of each other. Absolutely standalone though. You don't necessarily have to have a lot of stuff from the other stuff in your pocket that gives you 100% of everything that you need to know, know is in that capsule and you are fine. Um, but I do feel like my younger daughter's a, a bit of an advantage because she's had them building on each other. Uh, yes, so. That's how I feel about that. That's what I think. Okay, the letter tile app. I got this question, like, you're talking about the letter tile app, why do you think it's better? Okay, so if you are unfamiliar, in the All About Learning systems, they give you um, like magnet letter tiles and they recommend putting them on a two by three whiteboard, which I totally have and we use for years and years and years and you pull it out and it's tactile so they can do it as well as, you know, writing and other, uh, basically multi-sensory, right? That's part of that. For the first time ever this past year, I finally, it's in every app store, the letter tile app. It is, and they do have two free apps. They have a phonogram app and they have a letter sound app. So if your kids are early, it's that I, my kids love to play on them on my app. And it like, I really set that kind of like foundation for them because they just play with them, which is great. But the letter tile app for the actual programs, it's 20 bucks, like 19.99 in all of the app stores. I finally bought it. I could kick myself for not having bought it earlier. And somebody asked, I was like, why is it so much better? First of all, it's not two foot by three foot. Second of all, the little tiles aren't constantly popping off because they're just magnets. If you bump them, of course they're gonna fall off. Third, I don't have to reset the thing. There's like a one button reset. I can, I can sort it by if it's all about reading or if it's all about spelling and then I can sort it by lesson. It always has all of the right things. I can one button push it away and it clears the whole thing. Also, also, if it's not, if that's not amazing enough, you can hold the little tile down once you move it to the workspace and it push the phonogram and it'll sound it out for you. I, I could, I could kick myself for waiting so long on that. Since we bought it, I have yet to pull the big board back out. So I probably need to get rid of it, but like I could kick myself. Just get the 20 bucks, just spend the 20 bucks. So that's why, that's why I love the letter, letter tile app because it is just so much easier. Okay. Okay. Short on space. Yes. Get the app. How I am planning to use History Quest with my youngest one. Will we like do it again? I don't know. My youngest one really loves history. So we are a two, two or, th I don't remember if I'm two or three levels. In. I think it's only two, two levels in um, on history with her and primarily got it to use with my older daughter, but they both use it together. I feel like as we, yes, she's younger because she's only first grade, but as we get further along, she'll probably just do more advanced history things because you know, it circles back and teaches them more. So I don't know that I have a problem with that. I don't know that we'll use them again as of, as of right now. I don't feel like we need to. Um, what we do to use History Quest, if you guys haven't watched that video, is like we'll do the the audio book, turn it on and let them color the maps that go along with the chapter or the little coloring page that goes along with the history hop. And then we'll look at the activities. If there's an activity they wanna do for the week, then we do that and it works really well. That's it. I'm not, I'm not trying to make it hard. We're not like writing reports. Uh, they enjoy it. They'll recite it to dad, they've retained it. I'm not one of those people who ha feels like we have to check every box and do every activity and do all of the things because I don't want them to not like it. I don't want to not like it, to be honest. Um, so do I feel a need to do it again? We probably won't do the same things again. If anything, we do something more in depth. 
to be absolutely honest, that's probably the way we would go. Uh, we are doing A History of Us, the audiobooks in the car right now. Love it, love it, love it. Um, but I do want to use History Quest for the United States history. I don't know when, I don't know when or how I'm gonna get that in, but I do plan to. So I don't know, I don't know how it's gonna go. I should probably figure out my plan because it's almost planning time. Um, but right now, that's how I feel about it. I probably won't freak out and stress out and make her do it again because I feel like she's getting a good dose of it now. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, um, art and PE, how do we do art and PE? Well, PE is pretty easy because my kids have always danced, so check. Um, if they start choosing activities that are a little bit less physical, uh, we have done like a local homeschool soccer club that met once a week. Um, there's like ninja classes, but we would probably add in something to make sure they've got something that's very physical at least once a week, um, just because I think that's important. Um, art. We just, you know, the high gas, yeah, absolutely love it, absolutely love it. But my youngest also uh, wanted to take art classes. And then art, I mean, there's just kind of like even just coloring our history quest. Art is just always here and around us. We are members of the local art museum. This is one of those things when people are like, well, how do you know what you're supposed to do? I don't know what I'm supposed to do, but I don't need to be told what I want to do. So I place a high value on art. So it's just kind of always in our lives. It's always in our home. I, you know, we've taken them from very young ages to art museums. They've been to the Louvre. So I just, that isn't something that has ever needed to be checked for us. It's not something where I, and, and maybe if I didn't enjoy it, that would be a different story. Um, but I don't have to be told to do things, I guess, which we're in Texas. So I, Literally, we're almost told to do nothing here as far as standards go, but I don't have to be told to do some of that because to me, that's not even necessarily a school skill, that's a life skill. Appreciating art to me is important in life. Uh, so I don't just, I don't know, I don't know how to answer that. It's not something I've ever had to worry about meeting the expectation of because it's something we've just inherently done. I hope that, I hope that's helpful. Um, okay, extracurriculars. How are you balancing extracurriculars as you get older? There, that's um, one, I'm so stinking thankful. There have been so many years when dance has gotten crazy or it's recital time, anything like that, where I can easily, and I, I pretty much always have planned our school schedule like around dance schedule. So like when it's close to, like we try to finish early mid-May so that the rest of the time when they've got like all the things that go with recital season, I, we don't have to worry about it to be absolutely honest with you. You know, she's, gone and done homeschool performances during the day, which worked out really well. Um, like, you know, at like a senior center or whatever, she's available during the day, she could go do those things. I have honestly so much respect and no idea how people are keeping their kids out at activities, nine and 10 o'clock at night. And then they've got them up at school at six the next day. It's amazing. I have no idea. I am thankful all the time that we homeschool because it allows my kids to just have a little bit easier time in those other things. We don't have homework. We don't have, I don't know. I don't know how people do that. It's impressive. It's crazy. Something else that I think is really crazy is just kind of the intensity that 100% of all extracurriculars have taken on anymore because it's never just like, a, oh, that's fun. Let's move on. No, it all has to be like intensity and will you need more lessons and competitions and weekend things and all of that. Like, I don't know where that came from, but that could go for me. Okay. We don't all need to be little Olympians at six years old. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Okay. Not everybody needs to be sent spending 47 hours in the pool a week. Like, just, you know, like, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to maybe not be operating on like a 12 when you're like five. Okay. That's all. I just, that's my personal soapbox. It doesn't have to be intense. And we, that's coming from somebody who, whose kids dance a lot. So don't take what I say to heart. But what I am saying is I am thankful that homeschool provides us the freedom and opportunity to do those things because man, some of those things are bananas, absolutely bananas. But this also factors in. So now that I think about it, it's absolutely insane that the rest, everything else in life is built around that. But like when I cook is determined by our dance schedule. So like when I physically cook versus when we have leftovers, uh, what time dinner is, is determined by dance schedule. Um, what, what basically how I plan our, um, vacations and how I plan our school schedule is around dance schedule. So, I mean, that's kind of crazy now that I articulate that out loud, but it is what it is and we've got the freedom to do it. So. You know, I, I don't know. 
I don't know if I necessarily feel good with that answer because I'm like, oh, that's kind of gross in a little bit, but I'm thankful we have the freedom to choose that. That's the best I can say on that. Um, just remember if you're struggling on doing all of that, that whatever the priority is, homeschool at least can be flexible around it. So that's nice to know and to have. You don't have to, you certainly don't always have to, but then just think about those poor public school kids. <laughs> I don't know how they do that. It's so crazy to me. Like, you know, rush home, get a snack, homework in the car, out till midnight. Like, I just, I'm glad we don't do that. That is it. I'm thankful. I'm glad we do not do that. Okay, so I think that covers all of the random questions that I got. Again, most of them, as you notice, were like kind of big questions. So it's coming that season when people are thinking about this, when people are reevaluating their lives as far as homeschoolers, it's coming up. So we're going to get a lot more of these. I hope I answered them. I hope it was helpful. This is a really long video, apparently. Again, guys, don't forget to go check out that awesome offer from Creative Fabrica because uh, it's billed at like five bucks a month if you choose the year. And classes, crafty classes, boom, you've got art class. I'm just I'm just saying that's pretty cool. Um, and then just all the resources. And I don't, are you like, are you crafty like me? Cause I like, I love to be crafty, but I, 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 you know, all my businesses tend to be kind of artistic -y graphics and all of that. So I quite enjoy that. But anyways, guys, I hope you found it helpful, entertaining, informative. If you did, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, give this video a thumbs up. As always, you can find me down in the comments or over on Instagram at making everyday magic. Um, let me know your middle school science thoughts. Let me know how you feel about things. Let me know if you are suffering, like if you also agree that maybe everybody doesn't need to be a pro athlete at six. Let me know. Okay. Okay. I think that's it. All right, Holmes. Uh, any other questions? Let me know. I'll try and answer.